So, becoming your own authority means to take responsibility for the state of your life, which specifically means to really know how you feel. The three things we learn in Alcoholic Home is don't trust, don't talk, and don't feel. Um, so trusting your feelings teaches you to trust in yourself. And to trust in yourself means you will not willfully hurt anybody else because you get to know your real self. You heal old wounds and areas of powerlessness that are reflected in some areas of dysfunction in your life. And you all know what that is. That's why you're here. So to change beliefs also that you were taught in your family. It seems to me that we're sent down here and then we're given this family and they do keep us, you know, at least we get fed and we get clothed and we get, um, you know, housing. And they have all these beliefs they teach us and then our biggest job in life as an adult is to relearn a lot of those beliefs. And then, of course, to manifest your dreams. Okay, so you will learn that coming from a dysfunctional family is normal. <laughs> Everybody mostly is dysfunctional at some level. So we're all driving around at night looking in the windows thinking, oh, are they doing it right? What's it like in there? You know? But they're all dysfunctional at some level. So that's number one. And there's roles and archetypes that you might have played in such a family. And we're going to do a little sculpture up here so that you can see what roles you did play. Archetype is a Jungian word, and I like him the best, Carl Jung, as a psychologist. And it, it, um, they teach you characteristics of each archetype. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and that you have an inner child you need to get to know. And this kid is still in there with you from your childhood. And that people who suffer from addictions are really looking for spiritual food. And that there's a mechanics of communication for getting in touch with your soul. And we're going to learn about that. And that you have a soul purpose, which is what you need to discover in coming, um, being in this world. Okay, so 95% at least of families in the United States are dysfunctional on some uh, level. So dysfunction is normal, important. An alcoholic home is only one type of a dysfunctional home. So I happened to be around in the 1980s when uh, some people in California, some therapists, decided that they had to do something about adults that were living, had been living in an alcoholic home. Uh, because if you went to Al-Anon, which is a, a division of AA, you learned that step one, you're, you're powerless over alcohol. And these people said, no, no, we're not powerless over alcohol anymore. And um, so they started the Adult Child of Alcoholic Movement in the 80s, and it was big. And we did conferences all over the state and all over the United States. Uh, but your emotional needs were not met in this house because the mother is uh, attached to the father, trying to get him going. I'm just going to use the father right now as the main alcoholic, because in this country we have more men that are alcoholic than female. And so the woman is the codependent and very overly responsible, and you're going to see that in the sculpture. So then people, and then there was characteristics, which we're going to talk about. Yes. Okay, so these are found on page 23 of the book you're going to get. So I guess at what normal is, because I don't know, because I think that you know everybody else knows more than I know. I have difficulty following projects through from beginning to end. So just kind of decide, check off in your mind how many of these you still have. I lie when it would be just as easy to tell the truth. I judge myself without mercy. And most people who come to me are so hard on themselves. I have difficulty having fun. Um, I take myself very seriously. I have difficulty with intimate relationships. I overreact to changes beyond my control. I feel different from other people. I'm either super responsible or super irresponsible. I am extremely loyal, even in the face of evidence that the loyalty is undeserved. And I lock myself into a course of action without giving serious consideration to alternative behaviors or possible consequences. So that's the impulsiveness of the addictions. All right, so <clears throat> your unconscious holds repressed feelings. So this is us, e each one of us. Consciously, we came here today, um, you know, and we, you know, met each other and all that. So, and then you have an ego that's between conscious and unconscious. And this ego, before I talked a lot about that, says that there's nothing down there. Don't even look. There's nothing down there. Because I am, and anything, anytime you want to know what your ego uh, characteristics are, just make an I am list. You know, I am a son, I am a husband, I am a father, I am... I am kind, I am compassionate, uh, I'm lazy, uh, you know, just do that. And all of that is what your ego thinks you are. Okay, then we have this unconscious. 
And um, Freud said that we had all the energy in our, in our unconscious was due to sexual repression. And then Carl Jung came, came along, he was in Switzerland and Freud was in Vienna, and he said it, it can't be. Now Carl Jung, his father was a minister, he came from a line of like eight or nine ministers that he had in his family at the time that he was being raised. They were Swiss Protestants, those people that wore black and never smiled. And um, his father was kind of mellow. Um, he wasn't too proud of his father. His mother was psychic. So she was very interesting. He said she was a good mother, but at night, he wouldn't want to go in her bedroom because weird things were happening in there. So here he had the paranormal, and he had the religion. And he, he thought that a lot of our energy ha had to be due to what, the purpose for it was spirituality, to find out where was God, and was there a God? And he felt that God was good and bad, uh, eventually. And he was not religious, um, but he studied Buddhism and Hinduism and the Oriental religions, and um, he believed Christ was a model for us. And um, that, was, um, that was the Christian way that we should use Christ as our model. All right, and then he also said, whoops, that you're un in the bottom of your unconscious was your soul. And everybody talks about a soul if you go to church, but they don't really tell you about it. Um, so your unconscious holds repressed feelings and memories and is also a four-dimensional mind contained in your three-dimensional body. So the soul is how you learn different things about yourself, but in a four-dimensional way. So we're going to learn a lot about that as we go on.